everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Drama One. I'll be your teacher this morning, Mrs. Gunnysack. But call me Helen. Mrs. Gunnysack is my mother's name. <laughs> I'm not forcing around. Let's get down to business. And what is this business I speak of? The business of theater. Now, as you know, due to, due to budget cuts across the state, all schools have been forced to cut down on the number of sessions of all non-essential subjects, including, but not limited to, history, English, lunch, and drama. Restrictions will be even tighter this year, resulting in quite a low number of sessions. And by low number, I of course mean one. Joseph, are you saying that today's the only day we'll be learning drama? That, and because class times have also been cut, it will only last 20 minutes. What? What? Class. What? 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 That's enough, Papa. Now, before we proceed, I have some additional news. Principal Trolley Bottom has informed me that there will be a school-wide assembly at noon. And because December is National Shakespeare Awareness Month, this class has been asked to perform a Shakespeare play for the entire student body. Wait, 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 one of the crucialest things is to make the most of what you're given. So if we only have 20, sorry, 18 minutes to put on a full-length play that will only end up performing in a 10-minute time, that is no obstacle for a true thespian. No, pressure is where the dramatic thrive. And by golly, by golly, we're going to put on the best darn play the school has ever seen. But the school's never done a play. Now who's with me? <laughs> oh. Well, everyone's with me because it's, it's required. <laughs> now, let's get started quickly because the time is out of joint. For those unfamiliar with Shakespeare's work, I just made an amusing Shakespeare reference. That may happen from time to time. What can I say? It's in my blood. Out, damn spot out, I say! <laughs> First thing is first. What play will you perform? After much self-deliberation, I have made my choice. Many of you are already familiar with the play because it was made into a popular film starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Borlani. <laughs> Folks, I'm talking about the greatest tragedy of star-crossed lovers in the 16th century, Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> now, we won't have enough time to discuss the plot in depth, so I'll simply hand out scripts and we'll get started. Who would like to help me? Yes, you come up up here. That's what that means. <laughs> Hi, I'm Janine, and I just want to say I'm really looking forward to this performance. Thank you, Janine, and may I say, you've got some pep in your step. Thank you, ma'am. You've got some jump in your run. Thank you. <laughs> in fact, I can already get you in one of the roles. Really? Tell me, Janine, have you ever heard of a character named Juliet? Yes, I have. <laughs> now tell me, have you ever heard of a character named Juliet's servant? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> if you do especially while handing out those scripts, that role might just have jellyfish written all over it. Janine. <laughs> now, class, take 20 to 30 seconds and skim the play. Get a feel for it. I'll play some music to get you in the mood. <laughs> Is everyone up to speed? <laughs> <laughs> now, we won't have enough time to hold up to so I'll be casting the play randomly. On the back of each of your scripts is a character name. That will be your character. Whose script says Roman? Uh, it, it, it's me. Congratulations. <laughs> and my Juliet? Anybody? Anybody? Has everyone looked at their scripts? Me. I'm Juliet. Oopsie, you already have a part. Whose <laughs> 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 script has Juliet's servant written on the back? Oh, perfect. Problem solved. You two switch scripts. <laughs> now, students, um, before we begin, I want you to introduce everyone to a very special guest. Students, this is Mr. Wimbledon. He was sent here from the school board. He's what the school district calls a decency monitor. He is here to ensure that everything we include in this performance is up to the school district's decency standards. Do I have that correct? Um, yes, I almost forgot. Mr. Wimbledon has lost his voice in a skiing accident, so he's been communicating with us using a special instrument. Do I have that right? That must mean yes. How do you say no? So two honks is no, and one honks is yes, and three honks is maybe. 
Oh. Well, any questions before we start rehearsing the greatest love story of all time? Yes, love. Indeed, the greatest love of all. Love? Quite so. Romeo and Juliet are history's most timeless lovers, second only to Brad and Angelique. My girlfriend. <laughs> Mine. Oh, don't you worry, young man. The theater's about make believe. It's about facade. Your gorgeous girlfriend won't really fall in love with a small, unpopular student. <laughs> Where? <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to use our craft in order to fake what is real. For example, students, last year I was in a musical where I played a 16 year old girl. Do I look 16? No! <laughs> <laughs> yes, Joseph. Cecile. Yes. My script doesn't have a character name, it just says assistant director. Ah, thank you for bringing that to my attention. You have one of the most instrumental jobs in class. You will be my right hand woman. You will be my eyes and ears. You will be the glue that holds together the two pieces of wood so as to keep them from falling apart, therefore keeping them stuck together with glue. Are you ready to take on this role? Are you ready? Uh, I think I'm supposed to be a bio. Then come on up here and shadow me at all times. Shadow me. Are you shadowing? Yes. <laughs> okay, class, it's time to get underway. Assistant, what's just beginning of the play say? Uh, prologue. Good, good. Who's my prologue? I'm prologue. Okay. Now, because we won't have enough time at the assembly to say the entire prologue, I'm just going to have you condense it into 10 to 15 seconds. We're going to have, have you do that by reading the entire thing extremely fast. Do you think you can do it? As fast as you possibly can. Go! Two households. Faster. Two households. Faster. Two households. Faster. Two houses. Okay, this is not working. Okay. You're not an actor, are you? No. Do you have any special skills? I do art. Okay, we can work with that. Who else here is an art student trying to fulfill some sort of requirement by taking drama? Perfect. You all team up and create an artistic representation of the prologue, and make sure it only lasts 10 to 15 seconds. Are you looking for something postmodern, baroque, or impressions? Maybe some word more. Those sound good. Do those. Your name again? <laughs> Cecile. Cecile, what's next? Uh, scene one. Who are the characters? Gregory Sampson and Abraham. Who is playing Gregory Sampson and Abraham? I am. Which one? All of them. Oh, I suppose that's intentional. Perhaps we don't have enough players to fill that many roles. So you will be playing the parts of both Gregory Sampson and Abraham. Okay. In order to distinguish among them, I'm going to have you use slightly different accents each. Y'all can do that. Beautiful, Shaquille. Cecile. Yes. <laughs> they fight. Benvolio enters. They fight. Tibble enters. They fight. Okay, who's my Benvolio? Benvolio. Congratulations. And my Tibble. Benvolio. Yes, yes. My Tibble? <laughs> yes, you there. Joseph. Joseph, what's your question? I'm Tibble. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> now, folks, we're going to have to choreograph a quick sword fight here. Ah, uh, yes. The school district now considers Elizabeth Fencing to be a direct endorsement of in-school knife fighting. So we're going to have to alter the sword play somehow. Let's see. Do any of you dance? Okay, perfect. I'm going to need for you to put together a short dance sequence that tells the audience about the fight. Okay. Uh, good, good. Selfie? What's next? Uh, Juliet prepares for the party. Ah, perfect timing, Juliet Sermon. We are about to begin your scene. Hello, Principal Trolley Bottom. Students, say hello to Principal Trolley Bottom. Hello, Principal Trolley Bottom. Good morning, students. <laughs> hello. Uh, Junior tells me you took the role of Juliet away from her. Principal Trolley Bottom, I don't know if you are familiar with the play Romeo and Juliet, but the role of Juliet is very much overrated. Most scholars agree she's just Romeo's foil. Take Juliet out of the play, it doesn't really affect the plot. <laughs> Juliet's servant, on the other hand, is the literal blood of the play. She is a soliloquy, an act one, scene three, that holds such beauty, such grace, such je ne sais foi, that it will bring an entire listening audience to you. Now, Joseph, listen closely. <laughs> la, 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 can you hear me when I'm speaking? Yes. In the next few minutes, I need you to dive into these lines and become Juliet's servant. You will breathe the air she breathes. You will smell the smell she smells. You will clean the toilet she cleans. And when your journey is complete, when you have inhabited Juliet's servant's soul, when you are ready for your spotlight, you will shine! <coughs> yes, ma'am! Well, I stand corrected. Indeed. Who else is going to see? Juliet, Lady Capulet, and Juliet's nurse. Who's my Lady Capulet? Congratulations. And my nurse. Anybody? Anybody? Okay, that's hot. Principal Charlie Bond, we're going to need you to let me hand. I can. You can. I'm sure I can. You must. 
I definitely can. You can. Uh, shouldn't the nurse be played by a female? Nurse is going to be male or female these days. Haven't you seen Scrubs? Oh, well, no. <laughs> I don't know what you're There's a reason they call it must-see TV. If it wasn't, they would call it must-see TV unless you're unavailable that night. Okay, regardless, it is important for you know that in, dra in drama, there is no gender. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd love to help. Wonderful! Out. On behalf of the entire uh, student body, I thank you. Hip, hip. Uh, hip, hip. Uh, <laughs> Please take the time to review your life. Second to Aya. Yes, miss. What's next? <laughs> the costume part. The costume part. Now, because of our time constraints, we would be unable to say all the lines leading up to the costume party. So we're going to have to represent it through a musical interlude of sorts. Who here is good at music? Okay, put together a short musical interlude that tells the audience this is a party. <laughs> Not a problem, Mrs. G. Ooh, Mrs. G. I like that. Very hip. How much time left in class? Nine minutes. Okay, folks, we gotta focus. Focus. Where's my Romeo and Juliet? Okay. Because of our time constraints, I've changed your lines to the part. So you'll say those lines, step towards each other, kiss, and <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, kissing isn't allowed anymore. For, according to the school board, first base is a gateway base. So we're gonna have to alter the kissing somehow. Be creative. No kissing? No kissing. No kissing. Soup nuts. <laughs> yes, what's next? Uh, balcony seats. Ah, uh, yes, balcony seats. Now, because of our lack of budget, we were unable to construct a balcony, or any set for that matter, but it is crucial that we have a balcony. So we're going to need to think on our feet. Let's see, do we have any nerds in the group? More specifically, nerds into engineering. You that dropped your hands, you're into what exactly? Chemistry. And, and I'm just sexually active. <laughs> okay, so my engineers, I will need you to construct a balcony. What materials do we have to work with? Well, nothing. Time check? Seven minutes. Okay, but we gotta hustle. Hustle. What's next? Uh, Friar Lawrence and Romeo. <laughs> Who's my Friar Lawrence? Me. Who? Who said that? Me. I'm not very... I don't really... want to do this. <laughs> Nonsense. Everyone wants to be a theater. Without people wanting to be a theater, there would be no theater. And without theater, there'd be no place for old people to go at night. <laughs> now you want young lady? You want your grandmother to die of boredom? <laughs> okay, here's what we're gonna do. Fire over these speeches are long, and he likes to rhyme, so I'm just gonna have you say the last word in each line. The audience should understand the meaning of your dialogue, even though you're only delivering one tenth of the attended words in each line. <laughs> okay, but you can do it, you can do anything you set your mind to. <laughs> I guess so. I know so. All you have to remember is one thing. Yeah, you just get paid to act. <laughs> <laughs> What's next thing you want? major changes to the rest of the script. It can sometimes take Shakespeare a full five minutes to explain how poison works. So I've rewritten the rest of the play in my own words. Actually, I'll be honest with you, the Fear Factor season finale was on last night, so my son did most of the writing for me. <laughs> yes, Joseph. Oh, wow. Actually, anyway, is it rewriting the entire second and a half of a play illegal? That's a very interesting question. It has an interesting answer, but since we're already running short on time, I'll give you the abbreviated version. Because Shakespeare died so long ago, anyone can legally do whatever they want with his plays. For example, my 12-year-old and I can improve Shakespeare's law of writing. What was once long and drawn out is now quick to the point and far more meaningful. I think that if William Shakespeare were alive today, he'd be pleased. Nay, grateful. <laughs> so, everything after the fight sequence has been condensed and modernized and sped up. Every bit of new dialogue is in your scripts, from the wedding arrangement of Paris to the double suicide at the end. Ah, uh, yes, double suicide is a big no-no in our school district, so <laughs> I've changed the ending just a little bit, but it'll be probably just as powerful, probably far more powerful. And maybe, just maybe, the audience will learn a valuable lesson about life. Uh, Ms. Gettersen, <laughs> yes? We're running out of time. You are right. Oh my goodness, you are right. Okay, folks, planning stops here. But I want you to use all of your talents, as well as the skills you've honed in the last 20 minutes. Use your creativity to fill in gaps you haven't yet worked on. Please have all your lines memorized. Come up with whatever costume ideas you can by altering the clothes already you're already wearing. Meet you in the um, meet you in the auditorium directly after lunch. Ah, uh, yes, lunch is no longer in the budget. Meet you in ten minutes. <laughs> Remember, students, I want you to be both spectacular and fabulous. I want you to illuminate the stage of your feelings and make the audience leap to its feet in glorious celebration. And if you don't, 
because this is your only grade for the year, I'll fail you. What? <laughs> Any questions? Oh, none. Great. Break a leg, everyone. And as a result, toilet paper will no, no longer be made, made available in school toilets. Now, we're moving away from disciplinary business onto the likes of my show business, if I may. Today, Ms. Gunny Sachs, Drama 1 class, will be putting on a play for us. Well, I don't mean to give anything away. You might just see a familiar face in the crowd if you know what I mean. <laughs> now, uh, as I've been told, this place put on almost exactly as it was back in the Shakespeare's time. A little peek into history for all of, uh, for all of us. Ah, uh, what a treat. Now, without further ado, please, everyone, put your hands together for <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. to rejoice in splendor of my home. Where's my daughter? Call her forth to me. Where's this girl, Juliet? How now? Who calls? Your mother. She's probably upset because you did not finish your homework. Madam, I am here. What is your love? The valet here seeks you for his love. Ah, uh, a man, young lady. Lady such a man. All the world, he is a man of wax. Speak briefly. Can you like not appear to love? I'll look to her, if looking like you move. <laughs> Madame, the guests are come. Supper served up you called. My young lady asked for the nurse cursed in the pantry and everything in extremity. I must hence to wait. I beseech you. Oh, straight. Be <laughs> calm on me. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> if I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle fine is this. My lips to blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with an ending kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mainly devotion shall goodness. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is full of palmers' kiss. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. <laughs> <laughs> Thus from my lips by yours my sin is purged. Then half my lips the sin that they have done. <laughs> oh, trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. <laughs> Madam, your mother craves a word of you. She's upset because you did not finish your homework. <laughs> what is her mother? Her mother is the lady of the house. Her mother? A Capulet? Oh, dear account, my life is my foe's debt. <sighs> <laughs> He is a Montague, the only son of your greatest enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate, too early seen unknown and known too late. <laughs> <laughs> oh.